Hi everyone and welcome back to High School Science 101. Today, you might have seen helium balloons before or held one or even inhaled one, but you might not know too much about the element itself. So today we're going to cover some really important things that you need to know about helium. So let's get started. Helium is the second element on the periodic table behind hydrogen, and it's the second most abundant element in the whole universe, again behind hydrogen. It's considered to be a non-renewable resource, which means it doesn't replenish itself within an average human's lifespan, which is about 80 years. On Earth, helium is found naturally in two places. Firstly, the atmosphere. Air in the atmosphere consists of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% argon, 0.04% carbon dioxide, and then other gases like methane. Helium is present in five parts per million, which basically means 0.0005% of the air we breathe is helium, which is a tiny amount. And actually, helium is slowly escaping into outer space as well. It's also found underground in pockets of natural gas. Companies go looking for natural gas because it's used for gas stoves, gas ovens, and gas heating. But the helium isn't really that useful for them because helium doesn't burn. So they spend a lot of time and money extracting that helium from the rest of the natural gas and then they can sell it on. This underground helium is running out though. We only have a certain amount on Earth. It's running out because of humans extracting it from underneath the surface and it's also leaking out through cracks in the Earth's surface out into the atmosphere and then some of that leaks into space. In the 60s, the US started stockpiling helium and at one point had 1.2 trillion litres of it. Now they have about half of that left, and that's 40% of the world's market of helium. The US has been selling this way too cheaply, and it's discouraged other companies and other countries from exploring it for themselves, because the US has such a stranglehold on the market. And this hasn't helped the situation we find ourselves in, where helium is now considered to be a rare element on Earth. So what is helium used for? It's used to find leaks in containers that are going to be under extreme pressure or in a vacuum. And it's really handy because helium atoms are really, really small. So they'll escape through the tiniest of little cracks. Liquid helium is used to cool down massive electromagnets that are used in MRI machines. But theoretically, this could be replaced by any other element that has the same really, really good cooling capabilities. And of course, it's also used to fill up balloons to make them float. And so the problem is, if we run out of helium, what are we going to use to make balloons float? You could replace them with hydrogen, but then if you have a whole bunch of these at a party, that's a whole bunch of potential fireballs that you have at your party, which could make it very interesting when you blow out the candles on your cake. Uh, you could also replace it with nitrogen, which is the next lightest gas on the periodic table. But the problem with that is that most of the air we breathe and the air around us is nitrogen. So it wouldn't really float. It's pretty much going to be the same density as air. So lastly, what can we do about this helium crisis? Firstly, you can try and extract tiny amounts of helium from the atmosphere. As I said, there's five parts per million of helium in the atmosphere. That's a tiny amount though, and it's gonna cost far too much for too little amount of helium to make it worthwhile. And most of that helium's in the upper levels of the atmosphere anyway. Secondly, we could try making it. Every second, the core of the sun combines hundreds and hundreds of tons of hydrogen atoms together. They fuse together to form helium and heaps of energy. And that's how the sun releases its energy, the nuclear reactions. And we could scale that down to Earth, and it would produce a lot of energy for us, but it wouldn't produce much helium. It would produce a tiny fraction of what the Earth needs. The third option is to send astronauts to the moon to mine it. Uh, there are helium pockets on the moon that we could extract and we could send that back to Earth, but the cost of going up to the moon, mining it and sending that to Earth for how much helium you're gonna get just isn't worth it. So now you might be thinking, well, what can we do? Firstly, we need to encourage countries and companies to go exploring and stockpiling helium as America did in the 60s. And we also need to recycle it. We need to look after it. It's a non-renewable resource, which means it, it's not going to recover itself. It's not going to regenerate. So we need to recycle it as much as we can and look after it. And that's it for today. 
Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that now you have a better understanding and appreciation for helium. As always, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.